Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Texas Cornhole Show. I'm Jonathan Zarzinski. This is Grand Up Church. The current doubles. Back to back to back. Doubles league champion. That's right. I'm going to put these headphones on. I forgot about them. Uh, Sammy, that little fucker Soto, took my single title and double dipped me. He's pretty good. Double dipped you. Yeah. You know, most king seats won this last tournament. Yeah, I wasn't one of them. Yeah, I was thinking of an excuse for you. Uh, Sammy got to play on the main court against Mason Vega in the juniors finals. 30-something rounds. Yeah, I think they went two. It was best of three, right? They went Two games. Two games. Mason Vega beat them, by the way. Thank you. Mason Vega's throwing amazing this tournament. So what I will say on this is that I was warming up on the side or whatever. Sammy comes over there warming up, and uh, I, tell, I told him straight up, you better – you better give me your best game because I'm yeah. going to beat your ass when you're throwing your best game. Yeah. That didn't, didn't happen. It didn't. All right. What happened? You got any details? Um, Watching back the video and how I threw, my blockers were landing um, on my side mainly. Usually they're in the middle, right? I was pulling them more towards my side, which for someone like Sammy, I'm giving him a wide open lane and I'm fighting myself. Yeah. And um, I never, he never let me get into a situation like game one. I was putting him in situations where it's my airmail versus whatever you got. The one I played, um, that put me in the king seat. In the double dip games, he never gave me a situation where I could airmail. He didn't let my he and part of that has to do is my blocks weren't where they needed to be. Yeah. To make him, you know, have to make a real decision. So do you have a fix? Like, okay, you're missing your block a little bit to the I left. I tried to go hole for hole a little bit and get in a rhythm and um and I think that just built momentum for him, to be honest. I should have just kept pounding him with blocks until I figured it out. Yeah. Well, you know, I think your excuse is good. The fact that he got to throw on that championship court for a whole big match, you know, before he had to play you. I think that certainly helped him out a lot. But can't take anything away from him. He's super good at corner. No. And he, I'm sure he beats you a lot. Not as often as you may think. Really? Listen, when me and Sammy proved it this past weekend, he's better than me. He proved it. But I'll tell you right now, there's no way Sammy is walking onto any game against me and is thinking, I don't have to throw good to beat this guy. Sammy definitely knows I'm capable. I mean, there's a reason that he wants to be my partner in Worlds, right? Yeah. We are the advanced doubles world champions. You are. You guys are pretty good. We're pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good team. And, and speaking of that, let's just go right to back-to-back-to-back. To back to back. Doubles to champ. Back. Four? I said Sorry. three. Oh, my bad. Back-to-back-to-back. To back to back. Yeah. Four is next year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I got a dog next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you do. Yeah, that's going to be pretty fun to watch. But um, in doubles, you and Sammy straight through the bracket to the end. Did you uh, lose and, a game? And by the way, I wouldn't say, you know, we didn't lose a game. I wouldn't say straight through the bracket. We had people give us solid games. Zev and Jim Abdella, they, we beat them 21 20, 21, 19, something like that. Yeah. In our very first game of the bracket, they came for us, man. Jim Abdella nailed us. Big airmail to keep them in the game. Um, I think Zeb did something very similar. It's like they threw great against us, but once we got them game one, I think there was a mental thing of like, um, man, if we were if we had our shot, like if we had a shot, that game one, it being that close was our shot. So when we went into game two, it, me and Sammy just had momentum. Yeah. But uh, and then the Islands, dude, in the championship and the winter final, the Islands threw great. In the winter final, me and Sammy were just locked in. Um, in the championship, I mean, we we all saw the game, right? Cahill threw absolutely insane, and Preston threw really, really well too. I was just hitting air mails, and there's you can't defend against an air mail. There's nothing you can do. No, can defend. So, if I can quote Karate Kid, Mr. anybody Miyagi. can play, anybody can win. Yeah, so that's enough about you, Grant. Okay. No, yeah. I'm kidding. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait! Upper Crew Cup champion, and, and guess who I did double dip? <laughs> Team Sammy. Think about that, buddy. I know you're watching. Think yeah, about yeah. So let's see who was on your crew cup team. Um, it was me, Oscar Morena. Let's go, Oscar. And he threw gas. By the way, we uh, to win our double dip game, he hit bi- he hit big airmail. K money or Ty, whatever they're going to do. I think Ty threw it straight off the back of the board. Then I hit a big airmail, <laughs> <laughs> and it was game. Um, I think All it was eleven right. spot specifically. Tell Thompson, tell Ty Thompson that I scored an eleven spot on him, or me and Oscar did. And then we um, had Chase Lester and Reef Woodson, who also threw gas. Oh, Reef. Yep. Nice. Nice. So, um, yeah, I don't even think we said this is the episode where we talk about the Texas Cornhole uh, Championship, uh, which Grant 
and your company center had a, an incredible uh, show out. Showed up and showed out? Hey, my guy showed up. That's for sure. I mean, it seemed like you guys won first through third in every bracket. That's what it seemed like. So I don't know if that's true, but congratulations. I really I wasn't bracket, bracket watching too much, but um, I just know my guys had a great weekend. I think everybody was feeling really good. Yeah, you did. Um, I was watching from New York City, and uh, yeah, you guys Where did you great. got to be within 15 feet of Aaron Rodgers? I did. Congratulations. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers was wearing a silk tuxedo. Uh, no, like kind of, he had his like unbuttoned, no, no tie or anything. Just looking, um, what's the word? Swanky? I don't know. And he was there. So I was like, why is Aaron Rodgers at the Tony Awards? You know, the Tony Awards, it attracts a certain type of person that is into theater. Broadway has a, a type. And you just don't expect to see an NFL quarterback there. Well, he is. Um, that specific NFL quarterback is very like. Um, Metropolitan? Sure. And um, he's he just got on the New York Jets. He's trying to make a showing for the city. I'm not surprised he was there. Yeah, he was there, you know, on the red carpet. That was pretty cool. There's a lot of rich and famous people there. It was it was great. Um, it was great to be there. Were you on the red carpet? No, we did not do the red carpet. No, I think did- my, I think we could have because my wife was actually nominated. But no, we we uh, we did not. No, and I, I gotta. I mean, New York City is a fun place to visit. It's not somewhere I want to live. No. I'm so glad we didn't move there. We were talking about it because when we first got together, we were going to go move there. And uh, I shot it down. I was like, I do not want to live here. Oh. Like, this is not for me. Well, good job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, and I, I can attest it is not for me. And she agreed when we went, went back there. She's like, yeah, I wouldn't want to live here. Anyway, moving on. I'm moving on. So let me talk about a couple things here. Yeah. Women's Singles League Championship. Denise. Yeah, you mentioned her uh, at the on the last show. You know, um, beat Caitlin Allhouse, and I'm um, congratulations, Denise. You threw great. Um, you've been on a tear a lot lately. Every time I play you, I'm like, leave me alone because you're beating my ass all the time. You just you throw down the middle, you throw great. I'm so happy for you winning. Um, seniors. Scott Beck. Scott Beck. Who also threw good in bracket um, for singles, I believe. Yeah, no surprise to see him win in singles, right? No, I mean, I wouldn't say no surprise, but definitely still earned. Well earned. I got to give my boy Keith Ludwig a shout out. He got third. There you go. Good for him. Good finish for him. What was he throwing, Maryland? Clydes. Clydes. I think he's the one guy that throws Clydes. Um, and then Mason Vega with the youth singles finish beating Sammy Soto. Beating Sammy Soto. Which, you know, I don't want to dunk on Sammy, but I'm going to. Mason Vega beat that ass out. <laughs> oh, and I told him, I told Sammy right in Crew Cup, Mason Vega's going to beat that ass tomorrow. Yeah. And sure enough, Mason Vega came through. I get to say these things because Sammy beat my ass, all right? I got you. So you could throw a little shade his way? Just a little. Yeah, dude. Okay, Mason Vega maybe the most stoic cornhole player. You're pretty good at it. Sammy's pretty good at it. But zero emotions are going to be expressed. I know. I try to get that kid to smile every now and again, but that's just I think that's just the way he is. He's a he's just a neutral guy, you know. He doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. And that's a good thing. Yeah. That's a, a championship mindset. Calm, under pressure, doesn't let misses affect him, just keeps throwing the bag in the hole. I'm expecting um I need Mason Vega to play some more. I need him to go out and really try to make a name for himself because he's definitely got the talent. Yeah, no kidding. I, I want to hear his opinion on the mental game of Cornhole. I mean, is that just his style? He's just a chill dude? I think he's just a chill dude. That's what's up. How old is he? He can't be no older than 16. He can drive? He's pretty big. I don't know if he can drive. Huh. But he's I mean, he's right there in that age group of like 14, 15, 16. He's definitely not 14. He's like, I think he's like 15, 16. All right. All right, cool. So are we going to go through uh, every bracket? Um, so let me go uh, Let me go through winners, all okay. right? If you lost, I'm sorry. I want to go through winners of each bracket, you know, and, you know, when we talk about certain, th- certain divisions or whatever, there's only so much I know, right? So social tier three, starting at the bottom. Justice Vela. Gets the dub in social tier three. Social tier two, I have Deborah McKelvin. I'm going to say McElvain. McKel- Man, she's throwing Bonnie's too. I just have to give you a shout out and thank you for posting a picture of your bags. Those are my favorite designs. It was the cash money ones. Yeah. It looks like stacks. Oh, yeah. Of, the sta- of cash. Yeah, you are proud of that design. I yes. like that one because it looks like money. 
It actually looks like stacks of cash. Yeah. Um, social tier one, I had as Isaiah Hutchings, who threw center bags, greeds. He is an up-and-coming young player. I know there were some people complaining, hey, this kid's throwing a 7.5. He shouldn't be in social. In social. I mean, There's on. only so much he can control in the social, right? Well, and some people get really good really fast. It's an it's, easy game. It's Shout a, out to Oh, especially when you're going, like, I mean, we're talking about 7.5, right? That's a good point. So it's like, it's not like he was throwing nine. Yeah. Throwing a nine, you know? But you can take these guys that have played like horseshoes and baseball and softball players. I mean, you can take them from that Drop sport. Drop them in. And, I and mean, boom, they're going to be throwing seven fives right, fast. Right. Um, then I have uh, competitive tier three, Trace Kimber. He got the dub. Um, I think he just got, yeah. Yeah, he got the dub. And then I have competitive tier two, Bo Easter. He has been a longtime corn holder. Oh, yeah. And Bo Easter, good win, good win. And then competitive tier one, I have Ryder Smith. Welcome to the advanced division. And um, hope to see you make some runs there too. Double dip. Double dipped. He got the double dip. So did Trace. Got the double dip. All right, advanced tier three, Dylan Cordell. He was in the king seat and he won against Caden Miller. So yeah, Dylan Cordell, good win, good win. Uh, advanced tier two. Marcelino Rodriguez was also in the king seat. Um, and then we have another double dip, which is going to be in advanced tier one, Cody Brooks, who's been on the come up. Yeah. He's been throwing awesome against me lately, against everybody, I think. And um, he got the double dip on Joe Sharkey, who is also super good. You know, no shame in getting double dipped by Cody Brooks. And, you know, you should be proud of yourself for definitely finishing the way you did. Um and then t- open tier two, we had Kale Harrell. The silent assassin. Silent assassin taking down Lay McManus, who had a double dip. And then we have uh, open tier one, where Sammy So So Soto beats Grand Up Church. Yep. Awesome. He couldn't get it done. Moving on. He weren't able to do back to Moving back to back on. singles. I'm not happy, but is what it is. Proud of the kid. Um, random draw winners. This one's a little bit not as clear, but random draw winners. Aaron, you know his last name better than I do. Random draw winners. Right there. Oh, Aaron Aspieta. Aspieta. The Brown Mamba. Yes, he was watching our uh, Crew Cup games a lot, too. Aaron and Edgar won. Um, and then we had, I was in the random draw. This thing's a little hard to... And then in the lower Crew Cup, we had James... Tri- I know your last name, but I'm struggling today. I'm just going to say James, Brooklyn, Justin, and Bryson winning the um, lower crew cup. In the upper crew cup, we have Chase, Lester, Reef Woodson, Grand Up Church, and Oscar Marina. And that covers our winners for the event. Congratulations, everybody. Everybody should be proud for finishing the way they did in general. You know, to win, to, especially in the open and advanced division, it is not easy to finish real well. T- DCL has talent. It's tough. So, whenever you're getting a plaque and getting money, you should you should be proud of yourself. It's not an easy accomplishment, you know. Yeah, and you know, for everybody who's listening to this, thinking about quitting cornhole, I've been there. I've been there. I mean, I always come home from these big events thinking oh, I suck. What am I doing with my time? You just gotta remember what you're doing it for. And all for almost everybody, they got into cornhole to throw bags compete against other people and hang out with your buddies, right? Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things I used to say, or my wife says it, competition is good for the soul. I don't know who said that first, but it is good just to get out there and compete. Right. 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 It doesn't feel good to lose and it doesn't feel good to come home a loser, but most people lost. You know? There was thousand people at that event probably. Yeah. Right? And most of them lost. Right. That's the reality of tournaments. Mm-hmm. But I don't think we went through doubles, man. All right, I went through all the singles winners. Yeah. You want to so do you got doubles. Oh, okay. Um, social, tier two. Zach Hollick and Jeremy Lady in the king seat win. April Black and Heather Mullins were in social? No. Something you're, it can't no. be right. Oh, women's doubles. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that was interesting. Uh, I thought Tracy and Denise were going to win that for sure when I saw they were teamed up because they're a legit open team. Right. Right. And but I, that's just because I didn't know about April Black and Heather Mullins. I didn't really yes. know who they were. Um, April Black, they both throw gamblers. 
Um, both play whole for whole game. April Black, when it comes to the women's division, I feel like not many people know, but dude, she she's from, I think, that Shreveport area. So no, there's no, okay. or at least that East Texas area. Yeah. So it's no surprise to me that she was there, but she's always thrown fantastic whenever I've thrown against her um, on the opposite side of the board or the same side. So I'm not surprised to see them um, win for sure. Yeah, cool. Well, it was I watched the the match. It was there were some really cool highlights from that match, right? I think at first they didn't know they had to do two out of three, and then there was a, another round where uh, Denise actually missed. She had a bad round. You know, maybe the nerves got her. It was twenty twenty. I mean, it was close. Yeah. And um, so she threw a front border, mm. front boarded it. Didn't want her off the back, but yeah. throw slick bags. And then uh, and then the rest of the round wasn't that great either. Uh, her opponent left a bag hanging on the side of the board, and after all bags are thrown. The one that was on the side of the board fell off for oh. a wash, giving the bags back to the teammates to see who's going to finish it. At 2020, I mean, that was, uh, I think it was Trey Sparks made a TikTok, and it was something like, uh, crazy things happen when it's 2020, Seymour. That was his call. And it's very true. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Um, and my app closed. Let's see. I think the next one was uh, Social Tier 1, and that was Amanda Saldivar. And Yesenia Rodriguez, um, out of uh, West or West Texas, folks. Um, I think I'm reading these right. Competitive tier two winner was Donnie Marshall and Stephen Dooley, who I'm unfamiliar with. I don't know those guys. Highlighted green is the winner. Yeah, um, they were in the king seat. And they won. Uh, competitive tier one. The winners were one of my favorite cornhole players. Jolila Barrientes and Jaden Mancha. So Jolila, I've played with before at an ACO. They event. threw Phenom Greeds, I think. They did. They threw uh, Greeds. Um, and Mancha, Jaden was throwing like great, like a little cut roll shot. And Jolila is another really good one. They can both throw cuts and rolls, really good players. Yeah, these are, you know, 12 year old kids, maybe. I'm Young. not sure how old Jolila is. Kids. Yeah. Beaten up on grown men, right? It's a hell of a game, man. I, I've been there. <laughs> All right, I've been there. We all have. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just really happy to see those two win. That's great. Um, I remember a story with Jalila. Uh, I was playing with her in a co-ed, and we got beat. And one of the guys, it was, uh, well, I guess it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on his name. Ice, usually. Ice Price. Not Ice Price. Uh, one of the West Texas guys, a father and son duo. Oh, I know um, what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. Anyway, just... beat us. And uh, I went over to her and I was like, oh man, she's he was throwing really good. I don't know. I was kind of down on myself. She was like, oh, we got this. We're going to come back and win this whole tournament. And that's the kind of mindset uh, that you need to have. So she was giving me lessons when she's 12 years old, teaching me how to compete. Stay positive. Yeah, stay positive. We're going to win this. We're not out of it. You know, they, we went to the loser's bracket, but we we're still in the tournament. Um, yeah, so next up we've got advanced tier two, uh, George Vasquez, maybe it's Jorge. And Michael Key. Oh, they beat Jeff Robinson and Dane Christmas. Jeff Robinson out there at the at the big main court. Good for him. Advanced tier one, uh, Aaron Taylor and Zane Thompson. Hey, is that Ty's kid or Ty's little brother? Mm-hmm. They're in the king seat and they won it. Um, I think that's his second time winning advanced doubles too. Well, speaking of second time in the Advanced Doubles Championship, they beat Derek Good and Bryson Good. That might be their fourth time in the Advanced Doubles Championship. The Goods are in Advanced a lot. They won a lot of plaques in Advanced. Um, all right, Challenger, Tier 2. The Challengers took it. Now, there's a new guy on the scene, uh, and I was watching him in the brackets, Q Kohi. Oh, he's money. I played him in Rounders. I've played him up in Decatur a couple times. Um, he's from Oklahoma. Yeah. And he is a um, bag for bag player that can nail airmails. So don't like. So he'll bait you into blocking them. Is that uh, right? It, it, because he's going to nail airmails, and he's he's fantastic. Yeah. Well, he is, he was beating people that are good. Yeah. I had never seen his name before. Um, and yeah, he beat me in Rounders. Is he new? Um, is he new to the scene, or is he, is he I new think to he's, I think he's been primarily OCA, um, Oklahoma Cornhole Association, and he has worked his way into playing in more TCL events, and he's, you know, he's doing really well. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Well, he wasn't good enough because Levi Lechner and Mason Vega beat him, but... Um, um, I will say, game one, Mason threw a perfect game, and Levi was throwing great. I watched the whole... I watched it back while I was doing, you know, going through the videos and stuff, and... Yeah. Um... 
yeah, and then I mean Mason Vega and, and Levi were throwing fantastic, and uh, you know. Q did what he could, but you know when you're hot on both ends, it's hard to beat. Right. Yeah, it's a really good. Team I mean, obviously, too. we see what Mason Vega can do. Yeah. So. Oh, he's one of the best in TCL. Oh yeah. Um, and then of course you two, you Sammy and Grant. We yeah. Hello. Heavy favorites, heavy favorites coming into the um, tournament, and you got, you pulled it off. You know what we haven't talked about? Hmm. Pickums, the Pickum. We Where, tied. We tied. Uh, you. Beat me in singles, and I beat you in doubles. If I didn't get double dipped, would you beat me in singles? If you didn't get double dipped. You had, no, we had the same picks in singles for the top two spots. You had Sammy winning. Yeah. We had the, so we had the same. The top two, it didn't matter. Our picks were the same. So we got it right. It, it, that's kind of weird. You didn't pick yourself to win it. I didn't want to jinx myself, but. Oh, that's what it was? Maybe you jinx yourself by not picking yourself. Maybe you got to believe in yourself. Yeah, let me think about it some more. All right, well, we got like less than 10 minutes to go, but there are some, some things that happened at the TCL uh, championship. So on this show, I think, I have said that TCL should have an official, uh, especially at the big games, right? Um, and I'm watching from New York City, and I see Jason Andrews like sitting right behind you, right? Almost in your box, I guess is what it looked like. I'm not sure how close he was. Yeah, and I was confused at first... Uh... So that's the first question I have for you. Did he come to tell you guys, I'm here to officiate your game? No. Was it just obvious by his presence? You kind of assumed? No, I, you can see me give him a fist bump because me and Jason have a personal relationship outside of Cornhole. So I thought he was just saw the seat there and knew that I wouldn't say anything if he sat down. Right. So he went there, sat down, you know, moved my stuff out of the seat or he's holding it or whatever and uh, gave him a fist bump. And um, yeah, and then it was just, you know, keep it going from there, playing Cornhole. All right. And then... I, th I want to say it was like seventeen eighteen. Yeah, and a timeout was called eighteen seventeen. Um, the Isoms were up on us, game one, and timeout called. A big frame about to happen. Jason comes over to talk to you guys, mm -hmm. and I can't hear what's going on, and the announcers don't know what's going on. But it, it seems it's pretty obvious from the from the guy watching it. He's talking about stepping over the line. What right. what happened? So Jason got us together and said, "Hey, I was going to wait until the next game, but since y'all called a timeout." I'm going to say this now. And he was talking to all of us. He didn't um, specifically say anything about anybody. But he was like, next time I see someone cross over the line or step on the line, wherever it is, next time I see it, that bag's coming off the board. So just gave everybody a warning. And he's Yes. He was like, that bag's coming off the board. Do not step on the line. You can, you're not allowed to do it. The bag's coming off the board. So well, Hold on, wait. I got more questions. I'm sorry. Okay. Did any of you guys talk to Jason about like getting an official because the rules no. say you have to get an official if somebody is stepping over the line. No, nothing was said. So nobody was like, hey, Jason, you need to talk. But Jason made the decision to come do what he did based off of, according to him, based off of um, people in the crowd saying, hey, look, they're, you know, he's crossing the line. X players are crossing the line. All right. But you and Sammy, it was, I think it was Preston was doing well, it. Well, I mean, we, uh, it wasn't the guys that don't step when they throw. <laughs> right. So the Isoms were stepping on the line or over it, which, I mean, we're talking about a couple inches here. Barely. I mean, we're not talking about someone just abusing the rule like these ACL guys do. Yeah. We're not talking about any of that. I mean, if you, yeah, I, moving on, right? So they made the point or whatever, and then, you know, didn't like it. Didn't like it because also that's a big shot for Preston right there, and they're younger kids, and they're trying to talk about their next shot, a big shot to potentially, you know, make a – make something happen in that game, right? Yeah, I thought, you know, to, I'll criticize Jason for a minute. Uh, the timing was bad. To unilaterally make that decision, because I almost feel a little bit, not responsible, but yeah, I think there should be officials readily available. I think it's too difficult to find an official and call somebody out on crossing over the line. But to unilaterally go into a game during a timeout uh, when the game's really close and it's at the end of the game. It wasn't the time or place to make a point. It wasn't. Right. The time and was especially bad. when TCL's deal, like, all, I mean, whenever the crossing the line thing gets brought up or whatever at events, it's always, hey, it's on the player that they're playing to call it. It's a gentleman's game. If you want to call it, you call it. And you can go get an official and they can look for it next time. But it's on you to call it. TCL's not going to do it for you. Right. That's not what happened. Right. It was like an official 
right. unilaterally deciding to, to give a warning to everybody. Right. So everybody received a warning. Everybody received that, a that's warning. That's another thing that's in the rules. You get a warning first. So it's almost like if you want to cross the line, go ahead and cross it until you get your warning. Right. So he went ahead and gave everybody a Everyone warning. got the warning. Okay. That's also kind of not by the book. But no. I get it. I get it. All right. And then um, well, what happened? Do you think it affected the game? Yes. Yes. All right. I think um, when you're talking about, you know, the younger guys that don't have all that experience, you know, to keep their headspace right, um, you know, the very next shot, Preston airmails and or does whatever he was going for, and it hit the score tower on the back. That's right. And I then the next that. time he – the next – and then I think I hit the airmail – um, and then the very next shot, um, I think he nailed exactly what he was supposed to do the first time. Yeah, yeah I think Kale might have said that. So um, it just sucks. All right. Well, I don't want to criticize Jason too much. I know that it could be difficult to make decisions in, in just and, in, in general. In that environment, right? I mean, because it's that's TCL's thing. And, the, and crossing the line has been a topic of conversation for a few months now. Yeah. Like a big topic. Yeah. And... I get it. You want to make a point, but if you want to go make a point, do it the last event when you have number one ACL player Justin Burton Jr. and number one TCL player Sammy Soto playing each other, which both of them are crossing the line in that game. <laughs> yeah, make what a point you, then. But, Don't make the point for two up two upcoming kids that have been all about TCL for the last for the last season. But my understanding of the rules is if two players want to cross the line, they can. It's up to one of the players to call the other one out. And go get an official. Right. Right. So if Justin and Sammy want to cross the line all day long, they can. Right. That's how I understand the rules. But, you know, I thought it was kind of interesting, uh, something to talk about, because I know that on Facebook, somebody specifically wanted us to talk about this on the show, and we did. Yes. There we go. So. Moving on. Moving on. Also, uh, before the championship match, you're warming up, throwing bags, boom, somebody knocks over the drink tower, drinks everywhere, Lane is covered in, in whatever fluid it is. Yeah. Probably beer, maybe uh, it some was a fireball. White a white claw. White All claw, right. my white claw. Did it get on Oh, really? Yeah. I, I, Did you get a new one? Um, No, if I was going to complain about the, the only thing, the only complaint I've ha- I have out that, go buy me another drink. Right. You didn't get one? No. Uh. All right, did your bags get wet? No, bags didn't get wet, which is huge. Because yeah. that could have been like... Change the bags. That could have changed the whole everything. Yeah. Yeah. So bags didn't get wet. Bags so you didn't just get wet. Moved um, to the lane that moved uh, to the lane that I would have rather been on anyway. You should have been on that lane anyway. As a guy watching from home, like it's a much better viewing angle to be able to see the bags fly straight straight on. I like that way better than from an angle. And then one complaint I will have towards the um, TCL guys, when you have the league championship coming up and you have, you know, whatever's going on, how are you not announcing that game and give, getting an excitement level for that game before the game happens? It was just dead. It's just, oh, these guys are walking up on the court and they're about to start playing. I thought that was half-assed. Yeah. And I think, I hope they do better moving forward. Open doubles, open singles, here you, it is. Like, this, this is, is like, show. this is what everybody is striving to get to yeah, right here. This is for all the money. Ma- like, that, it, it should be made a big deal, and it wasn't. And it hasn't been. And that's been TCL's big issue from the start. They don't make... TCL is a big deal, but they don't make it a big deal. Well, the one issue I can think of is that other games might be going on, but they should just stop. It doesn't matter. I agree. You don't stop the games, just announce it. And maybe have a song. Maybe have something. No, no, you don't have to do that. Just announce it. Create create some electricity around it. Maybe have a a, a saying. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the show. Something. This is what we've all been waiting for. Right. All right. I like the suggestion. You think they're going to take it up? Going to use it? Yeah. All right. I think I'm going to hammer them. Well, that's it for us. Uh, that was fast. That 30 minutes went by quick, by. you know? Yeah. So uh, our sign off, um, Cornhole, just a game. Cornhole's just a game. And I'm excited. Texas Cornhole Show 2.0. 2.0. is going to be coming out next season. Me and John have a lot of ideas and plans, and I can't wait for this Texas Cornhole world to see it. I'm going to execute two or three of those ideas. It's going to be great. 